Almost eight weeks into the long-awaited operation that began on June 5 with limited gains and a fair share of disappointment, the counteroffensive has entered a new phase, as new brigades have been seen committed to the fight. Ukraine's forces say they have liberated more than 200 square kilometers in their counteroffensive, in a riposte to Russia's claims that Kyiv's military push is failing. But Kyiv has reported slow but steady progress across heavily fortified and mined territory, with Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malir describing recent gains near Bakhmut, Berdyansk, and Melitopol. Malir said Kyiv's troops had retaken two square kilometers in the past week on the Bakhmut front, bringing the total territory recaptured there to 37 square kilometers since the counteroffensive began. In the south, where Ukrainian forces are trying to advance towards the cities of Berdyansk and Melitopol, Malir said that Kyiv's troops had recaptured 12.6 square kilometers in the last week. While the world media were pondering on whether or not the counteroffensive had already failed in its objectives, Ukraine's armed forces had changed their tactics to a more systematic, attrition-focused approach. Now, with evidence that the Ukrainian command has committed or is in the process of committing what could be the majority of its reserve units to the battle, the next week's fighting poses to be crucial for the counteroffensive. New video footage shows, a Ukrainian Special Forces, Alpha, Kamikaze, FPV drone from the security service hitting a Russian multiple launch rocket system, reported as TOS-1A Solnsepiak. In this footage, other Russian war machines including tanks are also seen being targeted and destroyed by drones. Other footage shows, a kamikaze drone hitting a Russian T-80 tank and bursting into flames after the drone attacked it. Additionally, this footage shows a Ukrainian kamikaze drone, FPV attacking a Russian troop bunker near the tree line. As soon as the Russian bunker comes into view, drones come in for the kill. The tape ends abruptly, and in all likelihood, the death toll among the Kremlin troops has increased. Loitering ammunition has proven to be a game-changer for Ukraine, becoming the bullet to strike back at Russian forces. From 24 February 2022 to date, the armed forces of Ukraine have eliminated around 246,190 Russian military personnel, including 490 soldiers over the past day. Ukrainian forces have also destroyed 4,211 Russian tanks including six in the past day, 8,188 armored fighting vehicles and other Russian combat equipment. This was stated in a report by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine published on Facebook. Meanwhile, extensive minefields laid by Russian forces are proving among the toughest obstacles facing Ukraine's counteroffensive, and the tools that Kyiv's military has for removing them are inadequate, according to experts. Russia has deployed minefields in innovative ways, as part of multiple lines of defense, according to Rob Lee, a senior fellow with the Foreign Policy Research Institute in Philadelphia. In the initial phase of Kyiv's counteroffensive, which began in early June, Ukrainian forces took significant casualties and were slowed in part because of those minefields. There followed several weeks in which Ukrainian infantry troops sometimes advanced on foot in what Lee described as very, very intense combat. He said that in recent days Ukraine had brought the bulk of its reserve troops into the counteroffensive in southern Ukraine, as well as tanks and mine-clearing vehicles, echoing the assessment of two Pentagon officials. Still, the pace of Ukraine's advance has so far continued to be grindingly slow. In the last week, Ukraine has claimed incremental gains of around 5 square miles in the south. But since declaring on July 27 that it had recaptured the village of Staromayorsky, the ninth small settlement in the region since it launched the offensive, the Ukrainian military has offered few details about the state of the fighting.
When Ukrainian forces have deployed mine-clearing vehicles to clear a path through the fields, Russia has brought to bear its anti-tank capabilities, Lee said, exposing a vulnerability for Kyiv's forces. Mine-clearing technology has not evolved as fast in the last few decades as other areas of warfare, such as the use of drones and precision-guided missiles, according to Mick Ryan, a retired Australian Army Major General. Ukraine needs a Manhattan project for mine clearing, he said, referring to the program employed by the United States during World War II to build an atomic bomb. To overcome disadvantages in troops and weapons, Ukraine is attempting to advance on three fronts, in two southern sectors as well as outside Bakhmut, the eastern city that fell to Russia in May, and aiming to force Russian commanders to choose where to commit their forces, according to military experts. The costly operation near Bakhmut is one of the three axes in Ukraine's much-awaited counteroffensive that kicked off in June. Three weeks after its launch, Ukrainian defense officials say the reported progress is only a preparatory step for the main operation. Preparations are underway for further counterattacks near Bakhmut, according to 24-year-old Deputy Battalion Commander Ruslan. Many units across various brigades deployed near Bakhmut are training as Ukraine braces for a season of offensives. 